I know that a lot of people now in the modern media, Stugatz, are afraid of athletes coming into the space and are threatened by athletes coming into the modern media space. But I remember the first time I felt like something was a threat to journalism because young people liked it and it was doing things much differently than traditional sports journalism was doing. And I remember blogs being the first threat to traditional sports journalism, and Deadspin was the biggest of those blogs, the most revolutionary of those blogs. Dangerous, did good journalism, but also did dirty things, was uh, was on the cusp of cutting edge, sort of how do we attract young people and change the way information is delivered. And so I actually felt sad yesterday, even though Julie DeCaro is basically running zombie Deadspin. She's been trying to keep the spirit of that alive, for many years and it's hard and there's a lot of defense corporate defense being played against her and we wanted to have Julie on to both respect what Deadspin was once upon a time good and bad because they did plenty of bad too but they were groundbreaking they were pioneering and yesterday a European company bought it uh, fired all the staff and so I wanted to talk to Julie about what happened Julie thank you for making the time for us hey guys thanks for having me on uh, so tell us about the history here and how how heartbreaking the details of yesterday were to you personally. Yeah, it, it was really it was heartbreaking. Um, it's a good word for it. I, you know, I was a huge fan of Deadspin from its iteration. Um, I came up through blogs as well. That's how I made my way into mainstream media. So um, or I guess you know, it was mainstream media as Deadspin ended up. Um, it, it was tough. I mean, it, it, for those of us that, that really loved Deadspin um, and, and cared about the kind of work that they did, um, you know, I think about Diana Moskovitz's work. She was one of the first person I know who would go to the police and actually get the records when an athlete was accused of, of harming someone and, you know, put those up for the whole world to see so that nobody could sort of take an athlete who'd been violence against women and minimize what he had done. Um, that kind of stuff. I mean, it, I mean, Drew Magary's Why Your Team Sucked was, was great. Um, and, you know, by the time I got to Deadspin in 2019, I'd always wanted to work there, but it, it did feel like being, you know, uh, like you're getting to a party right as everyone's just kind of starting to make their way out you know that that was sort of the feeling there and um I don't know that that management ever really understood what made Deadspin work in the first place, why it was so beloved, why it had such a dedicated audience. And so for, you know, the last four years, three and a half years, however long I was there, um, there were a few of us that were trying to still do that kind of work. But, um, you know, obviously met with some resistance. Well, spe uh, speak on that, please. Not some resistance. Right now it can be told, can it not? How much resistance? Yeah, I mean I mean, what I would say is that it, what's happening at Deadspin, I don't think is unique to Deadspin. I think that, you know, we've sort of been singled out as, um, you know, the example because of what happened in 2019 when the entire staff quit in protest. But, you know, it's it's a, a thing of, of Google algorithms ruling everything, um, of being constantly encouraged to write not about what you want to write about and what's interesting, but uh, or what you think your readers will find interesting, but what's trending on Google. Um, it's a lot of SEO stuff. It's a lot of, you know, you can't swear in headlines because it affects our Google ranking. You can't do this because it affects our Google ranking. Um, Google really is sort of running the show these days. And, and I'm not sure that the general public understands to the extent that that's affecting what you read in the news that you're getting. Um, because, you know, every every outlet now has an SEO guru who's sitting there and is constantly looking at what's happening on Google and how we're ranking and why we aren't ranking well. And, and those are the people really that are sort of calling the shots. Um, you know, we would sit in, in meetings um, with our with management and be told constantly, you know, why didn't you write about this? Why didn't you write about that? This story did a million hits for this site. Why didn't you write about that? Um, and so it really became a game of how many readers can I get to read this rather than good journalism, which is what I think many of us went there intending to try to do. All right. So Deadspin, I'm not sure a lot of people would associate it necessarily with good journalism, even though I do. So I would ask you this question as you're trying to uh, or, or dedicated your career in spirit to trying to protect a certain thing. As you see a lot of disinformation spreading and corporations buying journalism and knocking out local news and the algorithms dictating what information is spread, how close are we to propaganda because something like Deadspin simply can't exist today. It's going to get overrun by the algorithms. Yeah, I think we're already there. I mean, we've seen it all over the place. I mean, there's things that there are things I mean, I'm off Twitter now for the most part. But I mean, you see things there all the time that people take as the God's honest truth. And, and, and you know, it's false. 
And it comes out a few days later that it's false. But by that point, the damage has already been done. So, you know, you've got these VC guys coming into journalism, seeing it as a profit making enterprise. Um, and, you know, they come in and, and what 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 equity firms do is strip away resources, layoffs, everything to squeeze every last dime out of a company before they sell it for its parts. And I mean, Geo Media has lost Lifehacker, they've lost Jezebel, they've lost now Deadspin. Um, you know, everything's being sold off for its parts. And it's not just happening to Deadspin, it's happening across the media landscape. I think that Katie Britt uh, response to the uh, State of the Union address where she, you know, completely misrepresented a story of a woman um, that has supposedly been trafficked. It wasn't even a journalist that discovered that it was a TikToker who was the person who looked into it because there just aren't journalists to do these jobs anymore. And you'd be much more likely to be told, hey, we need a slideshow on, you know, the 50 best uh, wide receivers of all time, rather than doing something that might actually matter, that might actually be something that, ta that you know, goes towards the truth that exposes something uh -huh. um, that, you know, there's too many people out there that just want to click through slideshows and everyone complains about them, but everyone clicks on them. So that's what the powers that be want everyone to do. 50 wide receivers of all time, you say. Hmm, yeah, yeah, I got Jerry the Rice I got the room's attention there. Let me Don't throw, ask Chris Carter. You're going to forget me, Calvin. Let CC. me throw uh, a little bit of chum in the water here. Tyrod Taylor's going to the Jets. Ooh, backing up Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Interesting. Mike Gusecki, Cincinnati Bengal. One-year contract. Mike Gusecki. Not bad. I like that. All right. Just uh, keeping you guys. Where's Julian Edelman? Is he top 50? Did you know that Austin Hooper is still under 30? What? Get out of here. He's 29. Uh, Julie, uh, I'm curious because this part is uh, you, you just sort of skipped over it. So just quickly, the history, entire staff quit in protest. Yeah. So in 2019, when uh, Geo Media or bought The Onion, bought Deadspin, moved Deadspin to Chicago, um, you know, Deadspin used to do all kinds of non uh, sports related things. So they would write about Trump. They did, you know, 50 things people put in their butts this year. Like, you know, all these amazing like content that didn't have anything to do with sports. Another good and, category, though. Ano 50, another you say. good <laughs> category. Wow. That Where's that doing popcorn butts? bucket? Uh, another wow. category that's really strong. I can't even argue with the journalism of that. I'll, re I'll click on that every time. 50 Great. slides. You wow. like 50 slides of that, right? I would. Um, so, you know, in, in my understanding, and I wasn't there for this, was that the mandate was, and what I was told when I started, was you can write about anything you want, but it has to have a tangential relationship to sports. Um, again, I wasn't there until in 2019, so I just know what I've read um, from the people who were there. But my understanding is that um, the, the day after <laughs> that mandate came down, they did an entire front page that had nothing to do with sports as a protest. And that resulted in their EIC getting fired and then everyone quit in protest. So Deadspin was shut down for, you know, a good, I don't know, six months, something like that. Um, everyone was telling everyone else, you know, you can't, don't work there, don't work for this guy, don't write for Deadspin, um, which I was on board with. I mean, I thought it was an incredibly principled stance. Um, and then the pandemic hit. And so suddenly I didn't have a radio gig. Um, they were re resurrecting Deadspin. They reached out to me the day it was announced that my radio show was canceled. And, um, you know, there were people there, there were journalists there, Jesse Spector, Sam Fells, who I really respected their writing and their work. And I thought, well, you know, I've got two kids in college. I don't have a ton of options. So I was part of that, you know, resurrection of Deadspin that's been going on since early 2020. Um, and, you know, during that time, Jim Spanfeller became involved with the site. Um, you know, you can Google his no, name. No, no, well, let me, not, let me, no, please, uh, let me stop you there. Who is Jim Spanfeller? Because this history, this is a person who basically made it so you couldn't do anything but cover sports and not particularly well, correct? Yeah, I, I would say that's true. Um, I mean, I was never told that there was anything. I, that's not true. I was told there were things I couldn't write about. Um, and basically that had to do with making fun of the decisions we would used for AI, um, that, that they were using AI um, at Deadspin. So Jim Spanfeller is a uh, member of a private equity guy from Great Hill Partners. Um, I know he was at Forbes before this. I don't, I don't know his whole history, um, but he came in and took over and took over a CEO of Geo. So that's, you know, Deadspin, Jezebel, uh, Gawker, Quartz, Gawker's gone. Quartz, uh, you know, Jalopnik, Eater, all those sites, The Onion. And, um, you know, quickly, I think his way of doing things became the way that it was his way or the highway. Um, you know, you're hauled into traffic meetings and, you know, asked questions about why isn't your site performing better? And you'd say, well, the site's crammed with ads. People are complaining about it. I can't even read on my article on mobile because there's too many ads. Nobody wanted to hear that. 
we're going to change the whole homepage. We're going to give it a whole different look, you know, and that's not a great idea. The fans are really, you know, loyal and dedicated to this iteration of the site. That, that doesn't matter. Um, you know, more slideshows, more clickable things, more things to get people to click on, more SEO words and headlines. That was the order of the day, and journalism came second to all that. But you also, one of the most popular posts in Deadspin history was headline, Jim Spanfeller is a herb. Yeah. Huh. With pictures of him looking like a loser as well. So you were you were going after management there uh, and uh, understandably trying to protest from within inside the machine. I want to play for you some sound from season two of Succession. It's Kendall walking into the company Volter, uh, which seems based on Gawker. You tell me how accurate this felt. Uh, some of you may have noticed servers are down and we're setting a satellite office on seven and I'm afraid I have to inform you, you are all dismissed. Yeah, you're, you're all fired. So if you can leave your laptops where they are and hand in your passes, security will be coming around now. Been through everything you've shown me, food and weed. Those are the only two verticals driving revenue, so we're folding them in. And uh, yeah, you're all free to leave. What was yesterday like? It was kind of like that. Um, <laughs> we had a little bit more. No I mean, look, anyone working in journalism these days feels like the sword of Damocles is hanging over your head every day when you go to work. I mean, Sports Illustrated advice, like you name it, you're watching mass layoffs and you're watching basically the implosion of journalism in real time. So when we got a note at 1130 that there was a mandatory meeting for Deadspin and everyone had to be there, we were sort of like, wow, this is exactly what happened to Jezebel right before they shut the site down. So then it was 30 minutes of abject terror. Um, we, you know, we jump on the Zoom call. Our um, deputy editorial director is there. She's been the one who's dropping the hammer on everybody. HR is there. So at that point, we pretty much knew the writing was on the wall. Um, you know, by the time the meeting was over, it probably took 15 minutes. Um, we were out of Slack. We were out of locked out of um, you know our email, locked out of uh, Google Drive, where a lot of our documents were. People are frantically trying to archive all their stories. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that that Succession nailed it. I think I always thought that was based on BuzzFeed, but it could be Gawker as well, um, because it's happening everywhere. And so it just sort of felt like it's our turn. Like you know, everyone knew this was going to happen sooner or later. I know no one cares about this, but it's a bummer, man. Like, <laughs> ah, the NFL news, Dan. And it never stops, according to Diana Rossini, the great Diana Rossini. Titans running back Derrick Henry has had a conversation with the Ravens. Oh. I, love oh. a, I love a good conversation. Oh, a mean, conversation has been continue had. Continue yours, by the way. Uh, yeah, you don't, uh, you don't want any more of it. What else do we need to know here? Just what, what, uh, what's the punctuation you would like us to put on this? Because Deadspin was... Uh, it was a fun, wild meteor that was dangerous, did, like I said, some things wrong. I could chronicle them, uh, but they were trying to they were trying to carry the spirit of muckraking journalism in the modern time. So what words would you leave us with, Julie? Um, you know, I think that people need to care where their news comes from when you're hearing that, you know, ESPN is in talks to or th that that uh, NFL wants to acquire part of ESPN, things like that. I mean, people need to realize if, if you don't like the news you're getting, or you don't like things that are happening. It's because everything is being congealed into like one media company that is in bed with all the leaks. And so, you know, people would say to us on Deadspin all the time, where are the stories about, you know, the owners who are secretly racist? Where are the investigations into sexual harassment? at? Well, first of all, journalists don't have time to do those stories anymore because everyone is having to crank out two or three stories every day. So you simply don't have time to do that investigation. But you have to care where your news comes from. And it can't just be the NFL sending, you know, Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter in there to, to cover things when that they are not, they are doing a different kind of journalism than what I was raised to do. And, and I think that you need to care if the teams are in bed with with the media outlets, if the people in bed with or people who own the media outlets don't care about journalism, only care about clicks, um, it's getting increasingly difficult to find places to go where that isn't the case. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it's, it's what's happened at Sports Illustrated, at Vice, it, it's happened in a million places, it's, it's been all over the news. Um, it, it's, it's hard because people just don't seem to care about journalism anymore. And and I really fear not just for sports, but for the country where we're going if care, people don't care, care only them. care yeah. only enough to hate it. Yeah. Ah, the NFL news never stops. Julie just mentioned Adam Schefter, and Adam Schefter is reporting 
Marcus Mariota is now a commander. Him and Sam Howell. You know what happens, Dan, when you have two quarterbacks. You know what it means, right? You don't have one. Keep on Sam Howell this year. Uh, Julie takes too many sacks. <laughs> Julie, thank you for being on with uh, us. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dan. 